What's up guys, welcome to a brand new YouTube video. Today's gonna be a one-off meeting that I'm only gonna be filming for today and then we're gonna be closing out the video. It's a very important day because today we're going to be deadlifting the most weight that I've deadlifted since I've been on the platform and that number should be anywhere around 749 pounds. Now, with that being said, I'm getting ready for the gym. I'm starting my day off a little bit later than normal. It is currently 10.30 a.m. By now, I've already been inside the gym and I'm probably halfway done my workout, but I had a couple of meetings today and a couple of things to do, and then I ended up cleaning up my apartment, and now I'm free to go lift. With that being said, I need to get ready. Obviously, shave my little facial hair, do a clean sweep of the baldy. Then after that, put on clothes, get my pre-workout ready, my intro workout ready, put on some cologne, and then head on to the gym. All right, now it's time to turn to a chemist. We're mixing the pre and intro workout essentials. We got Flight here. You guys already know the code Russell to save yourself 10% off your next purchase. We got Flight, no endo or anything like that. I don't want the pump to be too crazy and make myself uncomfortable while I'm pulling. Throw this in here. I'm gonna throw like a little extra scoop. A little, ugh. I ain't gonna lie, this morning has been <coughs> taxing. Yeah. All right, so we got pre-workout right here. Now this is the intro workout. So the intro workout is gonna be the G1M Sport. It's gonna add 20 grams of carbs during my workout as I sit on it, along with 350 milligrams of sodium. Honestly, that's all I need. I really don't need the electrolytes. Especially now since the weather is a little bit cooler, so I'm not sweating as much, so I don't need as much. Sodium. So let's go ahead and shake this bad boy up. There we go. Now we have pre and intro workout. Let me grab the last thing for real. It's going to be the shoe. Ooh, my Mikasa playoff eights. All right, everything is ready. Water, pre, intra, shoes. We good. All right, it's time to head on out. I'm ready to deadlift, bro. I want to make this day like a fucking disgusting deadlift session. Now I'm gonna review this song at the end of this video for show. I decided to switch lunges because it's time to get busy, but uh, the campsite's looking crazy today. I mean, we got like a bunch of stuff here because I'm doing a dual camera setup, so I'm gonna be using this for real. But I got my SPD singlet over there. You can use the link in my description box to shop SPD equipment. Got my custom Nikes over here uh, for deadlifts, intra, water, belt. All that kind of stuff. I gotta put in some music because I'm not too sure what's playing right now. But uh, all right, nonetheless to say, I'm just gonna have like a raw, you know, take of me working up to my top single. Let's get to it.
<laughs> just not a good session, man. And I, I know exactly why, and I just hate making excuses or whatever, but, you know, last night I fell asleep super early, missed the whole meal. And this morning, my morning routine was thrown off, just like with the meetings that I had and all that kind of stuff. So like, I started my workout so much later than normal, but I ate my breakfast around the same time that I normally ate it. So it's just like, I didn't have that extra oomph to me. So when I started, when I got up to four plates and I, I, repped, I did my single, I was like, this ain't gonna be a good session. But I was just trying to lock in a little bit to just kind of like see if some, <coughs> something special could happen. But honestly, like, I'm not even gonna lie, when I started driving here, I was like, yeah, this this ain't finna be it. Like, I just knew. I was like laying on my bed, like on a call, and I'm like, this ain't gonna be it. So, I mean, I managed 705 today. Ugly as 705 I've done in a minute, too. And it's just like, damn, bro. We were supposed to do six, uh, 749 today, so it's just like a lot of stupid shit just leading up to this song. Lame ass session. <laughs> But it's all good. I was like debating. I'm like, damn, do I even want to post this shit? Or do I want to record this shit? But I mean, it is what it is. You don't have great sessions every single time. So, <laughs> fuck it, man. Uh, so now we have back down sets. We have a four by four RP seven to eight. I have no sauce. Like, I, I literally feel like I can't feel my legs. Like, that's, I just feel hungry. I feel like, I just feel weird. I, I'm listening to my body. I know my body's telling me. It's like, yo, we need fuel. We need food. I haven't eaten since uh, like around like 8.30 and right now it's 10, 105 so I just, my body's just telling me you ain't got it today bro, like you ain't got no sauce so it's all good. And it's funny because I had a stupid number in my head that I was getting today but that's why I'm just frustrated because it's like damn like I, I built up to this day for four weeks and uh, the day came and just shit the bed you know. So Alright, let's clean the weight off. I'm gonna debate like what I want to hit for my for my back down sets, but it's not gonna be anything too crazy because I literally just I feel depleted. Like I literally feel like deflated. So uh, let's see what's good. Just had a quick meeting with myself. I decided I'm gonna do oh, 484. <laughs> Bro, I think like I'm trying to think about what's more frustrating: uh, having a training session where you don't hit the number that you wanted. Actually, no, no. no. Definitely getting injured is way more frustrating. But like, when you have an expectation on how a session wants, uh, needs to go, or when you have an expectation on how a session is going to go, you like put it in your head. Like I'm thinking about like everything that goes into like having a good session, and I just didn't fucking do the things I needed to do in order to have a good one. It just it's irritating because, oh, just ugh. now I gotta wait like another four weeks to get some sauce on. <laughs> it's just annoying, bro. It's just annoying. So I'm just gonna try to get out of this uh, session healthy. The most important thing is like when you're not having that, we don't feel that sauce, like we don't feel juicy or whatever, don't keep pushing. Like I literally feel like my body is depleted right now. And the last thing I want to do is <laughs> trying to force the issue and get injured. Like even at 705, like that looks some that looked like some injury shit. I was looking at uh I was looking at the replay, I'm like, ugh, like that's how you it just looked nasty. So I'm like, alright bro, just just get through the workout. So let's do this four by four, four eighty four. Yuck. That's how you know it's just not a good day, bro. That was... Oh my goodness.
I'm trying to get over my annoyance over today's session. Uh, I'm like generally like pretty, pretty annoyed, but um, I'm thinking about, you know, this is just a lesson of how important it is to make sure your nutrition is on point. Uh, I think you guys don't realize like how much your body gets on schedule. And for the last like couple of months now, like my body expects a certain amount of calories at a certain time. And whenever that timing is off or I miss a meal or whatever, it does affect me inside of the gym. So like, I'll give you guys some context to what I was thinking about today's session. So I was scheduled by Joey at 7.49 on Della today. Uh, but I was actually feeling my body and I can typically feel when I'm gonna have a good session inside of the gym. And I could tell that I wasn't fatigued with the squat session I had earlier in the week. And I was like, damn, like, I could come in today, probably hit 771 really smooth. And if I hit, so what I was gonna do is hit 749, see how that moved, then move up, then move up again. Uh, but like literally like that missed meal and then how my morning played out, just like, <laughs> just fucked up my whole morning. And the reason why I'm annoyed is because I know that I had sauce today. And on top of that, I'm not gonna be able to get anywhere close to this weight for the next like four weeks because we're gonna be building back up. So I already know what's gonna happen. I'm at the end of the block, this is week four. I'm gonna hit a deload for like another week and then slowly build the fuck back up and it's just gonna take forever. And I'm like getting impatient because I just wanna hit big weights, but it's all good, it's part of the process. I just want you guys to see what the process includes because sometimes, you know, you could be on, you could be killing it, and then you'll have a session where I just kind of like, damn, am I even really like that? So I just wanted to document this, but I'm looking at tomorrow because uh, this is still like week number four of the block, and usually week number four is where all the big weights are hitting, but I'm looking at tomorrow, I have a five by two and RP seven to eight, so like I could probably hit a PR tomorrow. I'm not like saying I'm going to, but I could probably hit some big weights tomorrow and make my fault to make myself feel better. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make a determination whether or not I'm gonna record that because I just wanted it today to be a one-off video. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna leave this session and this video and like have this be the highlight and the focal point of the video. And then tomorrow I'll probably vlog again and then detail, you know, what I'm actually able to hit on bench and then really get into what's making bench so successful. But man, fuck. I just had to get that out of my system. It's just fucking annoying whenever you have expectations for a session and it doesn't come to fruition. But it's all good. Uh, what else? That's pretty much it. I'm not even gonna bodybuild. I actually just need to go home and focus on, uh, you know, getting some food in and recovery. So thank you guys for tuning. <laughs> thank you guys for tuning into this video. Uh, we're gonna get it back. Don't worry. In probably the next three weeks or so, I'm gonna get some stupid shit. So thank you guys for tuning into today's video. Like always, you guys like today's video. Oh shit! Wait, 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 wait. I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to review the J. Cole song, so I'll probably do that a little bit later. <laughs> I'll catch back with you guys when I'm sitting at the crib doing that. Uh, all right, let's tap into this new J. Cole song. It's Port Antonio. So J. Cole bowed out of the beef with Kendrick Lamar. Um, he, when he dropped My Delete Later, which I mean, he actually did, he had a seven minute drill or seven minute freestyle or whatever at the end of the mixtape where he was pretty much going at Kendrick. And he got on stage and, and decided to take that back. So it's been a couple of months now. The beef is basically died out between Drake and Kendrick. J. Cole last night decided to drop Port Antonio kind of talking about his perspective and how he views things now that he's dropped out of the beef and he's kind of focused on what he has going forward. So let's listen to this. I'm gonna try to speed through a little bit just because like I feel like the real juicy parts at the end, but bro, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this right now. J. Cole was spitting. The way he raps, bro, like I know a lot of people have been giving him shit for this particular track, but one thing could not be denied. He is top three for sure. I know like people have been joking about the big three. Now it's only big Kendrick, like trust. There's a big three and J. Cole's in there. So let's, let's start it off. I ain't gonna lie, this, this part's a little eerie. When you listen to it at night, it's kind of scary. But ooh, that's smooth right there. I'm gonna use this in a, uh, in a get ready with me type of full day video. Ride to it, ride to it, ride to it, ride to it, hey. You know, J. Cole always has like the best smooth, chill, lo-fi type of beats. I wonder if he produces himself. Uh, let me see if there's like any um, any detail on this. I don't think so, but uh, he, he didn't drop this on DSPs just yet. He, do he dropped it on YouTube and I believe Instagram, but it's definitely on YouTube. 
Listen. Young Jermaine walked the straight and narrow Minimum wage jobs for the narrow But yeah. still my mind was on the zeros I fiend for the perks that was seen flipping birds So we So one of the things I noticed about the first verse Is he's basically detailing uh, I guess like his early years was Skipping church but my eyes was on the sparrows Niggas flipping pies Spending thousands on a payroll shit I wanna shine too yeah. I want dimes too One of the One of J. Cole's like calling uh, cards is detailing like how he was growing up struggling wishing that he could spend money on clothes I mean like there's so many bars where he's talking about when he was broke coming up and like seeing people like the dope boys in his neighborhood Kind of be flashy with the money that they were making and he just always Kind of wanted to do the same Jealous niggas want to know just how my rhymes blew Mono e mono I'm bono I'm you times two. Oh Oh my god mono e mono I'm bono you times two God damn you too, Bono. Listen. Now I'm bougie, I just out cool the fountain blue. But never forgot the spot where I developed my plot. The dwell at the top, the veil where all my skeletons lock. If I could do it all over, then I never was. He said he's too bougie for the fountain blue. Fountain blue out in Miami, that's a nice ass hotel. He said he's gotten so big, he's too bougie for that. But he never forgets where he comes from, which is the veil. I seen good, I seen bad, had my melon in my I seen lifelong friends turn to devilish eyes. He said he's seen good, he's seen bad, even his melon and mocked. You know, Jay J. Cole is, you know, biracial. So he's talking about how people question his toughness due to the fact that he's mixed race. And then on top of that, uh let me go back and hear what he said. Uh, Friends turn to devilish. Yeah, friends turn to devilish. I, I was ops. Mike and Red Leather trying to tell him to stop. You better beat it for you know, beat it or uh yeah, beat it like where Michael Jackson is telling like both sides not to fight each other. You see that heavy metal get pop. He was a mean ass wing with a hell of a shot. But if no team draft king, he, used to who? On the block. he said if no team draft king, basically him, right? He wanna fall till he fall into the federal's knack and yeah. sit his ass on the bench for moving careless with rock. You can't relate unless your father was not around and your mother went out and found someone else and they brought him around and they salaries oh ain't combined. They married and brought you out and that poverty that you moved to oh the soft and the so, so that whole so I mean this whole verse right here towards the end of this verse, he's basically detailing like, yo. You can't relate to me or my struggle if you haven't done X, Y, and Z. And he goes into detailing the things that have made him him. The fact that like his his parents split and then his mom went and married a new dude. And the new dude that they married, their their income wasn't able to kind of like come together to make... Man, I'm telling you, this guy's spitting, bro. And when you back in the hood, you feel awkward about it now. Then your confidence start to drown. But the rapping gave you some positive thoughts and you jot them down. Got him down. Got him down. I'm telling y'all right now, do not be surprised if you go on IG one day and see like a full day with me with this beat playing. It'll probably be on uh, just the instrumental if I don't use the lyrics just because like, you know, my life, <laughs> my life don't relate to the lyrics whatsoever. But. Now this next verse is where he really gets into the shit. Ride to it. Ride to it. Hey. I love that. Y'all niggas ain't stopping me. Y'all niggas ain't stopping me. Y'all niggas ain't stopping me. That's it. That's that's right there. That that bar or that you know that little chorus right there. Y'all ain't stopping me. Love it. Y'all niggas ain't stopping me. Y'all niggas ain't stopping me. Ooh yeah. Uh. Benjamin Button, cold flows reverse time to find deliveries good as mine. You gotta search prime. God damn, Benjamin flows to find a delivery like mine. You gotta go search primes. Basically, like you gotta go to rappers primes to find deliveries as good as cold or like where he's at right now with his uh, spitting ability. God damn. I'm scaling heights, hide and birds can perch, trying to be something, hoping that peace comes to my cursed mind. One mm. thing's for sure that I've matured from my first rhyme. I mm. learned long ago you can't please them all and it hurts trying. And it I learned that you can't please them all and it hurts trying. Man, I feel that shit right there, boy. You can't try, you can't please them all. And when you try to do it, you get fucked up. Trust. This game where all you got is your name like dirt. I'm smirking at niggas trying to be smirch mine. Absurd times. But if I think uh I'm like Dirk when he smirks, people trying to besearch mine. I think he's talking about when LeBron. Oh I think he's talking about when LeBron and D Wade 
made fun of the fact that that Dirk said he was sick during the finals and he won four straight <laughs> when they were up like 2-0, I believe, in the finals. And that's what he's talking about. The fate you told it is wise. I can see hate in both for your eyes, but the third's blind. So you search some. An eye for an eye leaves both blind. But you struggle, which explains the puzzled look on the dull faces the word finds. I hate when raps become, but like, do not disturb signs. Can I get it if I see it's about the dough? They instigate the fuckery because it's profitable. All right, so this is this is what he starts talking about, like his stance, and this is basically his response to the whole Kendrick and Drake beef uh, whenever he decided to bow out. But saying stop the violence tools with dudes in hospitals. I pulled the plug because I see where that was about to go. They wanted blood, they wanted clicks to make their pockets grow. Basically, he's saying that both sides wanted blood to make their pockets grow. Like they're trying to defend. Well, he's gonna get into it, but. They see this fire in my pen and think I'm dodging smoke. I would have lost the batter dog. I would have lost, lost the bro. The He's saying that, like, y'all see the way my pen work? Y'all think I'm dodging smoke? I didn't want to get into that shit. I was finna, I was finna beef with a real life homie, and I didn't want to do that. And it's like, I don't know why people are shitting on him for that. Like, he's just being honest. Like, when I look at it like this, like, he's saying that, like, what's the point of beefing with someone just to prove that you're better? But the way that they were going about beefing, it was past just rap. Like, it was on some shit where, like, they're destroying each other's legacies, and he wasn't on that. Like, to go against Kendrick, Kendrick was on, like, yo, like, I'm trying to like not destroy. I'm trying to destroy Drake's career, not just prove that I'm better than him. I would have gained the phone and all for what? Just to attain some old props for strangers that don't got a clue what I've been aiming for. Basically, basically saying is like I would have gone and beat with these dudes for what? Just to prove to a bunch of fuck people uh, that I'm better than them. Like that's not what I came here to do. And y'all want me to tear down people that I've become friends with? People just want blood, bro. Since the age of 14, Jermaine is no king, if that means I gotta dig up dirt and pay the whole team of algorithm bot niggas just to sway the whole thing on social media, competing for your favorable memes to be consistent. Basically he's saying, which is something that a lot of people have accused Kendrick of doing, like when you talk about academics, uh, Joe Budden, they've all talked about how Kendrick had definitely used bots uh, to kind of boost the uh, conversation around him beating Drake and... I, you know, I don't know what's true or what's not. I think both sides are probably doing it. What's interesting is that I've never seen Kendrick's music get so much rotation as fast as it's gotten. But I also think that he's he has that like that steroid injection at the moment due to the fact that like he is beefing with the number one artist in the world right now. So it's like when you're saying his name and you're like actively going at him, you're gonna get more views and clicks. To the best of living rest, the weight of both things. I understand the thirst of being first that made them both swing, protect their legacies. So lines got cr I understand the thirst to be the first. Basically, it's like, I get it. Like, y'all wanna be big dog. Y'all wanna be the best, and y'all went at it to figure out who's better. Cross, perhaps regrettably, my friends went to war, walked away with all they blood on me. Now, some will discredit me, try wipe away my legacy. Let's see. But please okay. find a nigga out that's rapping this incredibly. Huh? My dog texted me, I shared a word he said to me. If you refuse to shoot the gun, don't mean the gun ain't deadly. If you refuse to shoot the gun, that means the gun ain't deadly. You don't gotta shoot the gun to show that you, you know, that it worked. No. Okay. I guess in that metaphor, hypothetically, the gun is me. I text the back like, guess this gun ain't what I'm trying to be, my nigga. They stripped me on my spot, and now I'm finally free, my nigga. Bro, I felt that, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Whenever he said that, like, a gun is what I'm not, a gun isn't what I'm trying to be, like, that's not, this is not what I came here to do. Like, I, don't, I didn't come here to tear other people's down, uh, tear other people's careers down to prove that I'm the best. Like, no, I just came here to show people I'm nice and provide for my family and get out the veil. And, like, when he got stripped of that, he felt free. Like that that necessity or, or that fake desire to be the best. Like those are things that people put on you. You didn't come here to do that shit. Like, yeah, you wanna be you wanna be touted as the best, but not in that manner to where like you're willing to tear and destroy what other people have built for themselves. And he's just like, yo, just recognize that I got the best bars in the game right now. And I ain't like I'm not trying to battle and kill and destroy someone else's career. He's not a he's, he doesn't have that like and I never looked at Cole as like a battle rapper type of like take your lunch money type shit. Like when I listen to Cole, it's like on some like motivational shit coming from the trenches. And then he, he raps it about it in such a fashion that is unprecedented. Right. I never needed him to go at Kendrick. I never needed him to go at Drake. I never needed him to do any of those things. I can still say that J. Cole is top three without him having to prove himself in battle 
with Kendrick and Jake in the manner that they prove themselves, if that makes sense. They say I'm picking sides, they don't you lie on me, my nigga. To start another war, and Drake, you'll always be my nigga. I ain't ashamed to say you did a lot for me, my nigga. I think he, he said this part because it makes it seem... So what society and, you know, the people that are listening have done have pitted Cole and Drake against each other now because Cole went and, was, uh, and uh, had an apology for Kendrick and it made it look like, yo, Kendrick, I'm on your side. I'm not trying to get in the middle of this beef. Uh, but... but and he started going on a feature run with, I guess, like, quote, unquote, all of Drake's ops or people that Drake has a problem with or whatever. And Cole's like, nah, bro, it's not even that. Like, y'all got to stop trying to make it into this thing that it's not. So he's telling Drake, yo, like, I still fuck with you and I appreciate everything that you've done for me. Fuck all the narratives. Tapping back into your magic pen is what's imperative. Reminding these folks why we do it. It's not for beefing, it's for speaking our thoughts, pushing ourselves, reaching the charts, reaching your minds, keeping your hearts, creeping up finding. I felt that. Like, he's like basically telling Drake, like, yo, man, just focus back on the music and, and pouring your soul out to your fans and to the people that are listening because. You know, this isn't what it, this isn't what it's about. It's not about tearing each other down or whatever. It's literally just about us or about them living out their dreams and 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 their goals off of music and expressing themselves. Like it doesn't have to be this ugly thing where we're tearing each other down. This like hip hop is a is a combat a combat sport for sure. But like sometimes I just feel like we get so caught up in tearing each other down. They don't do that shit in country music. They don't do that shit in pop music. Like they don't beef like the way hip hop artists do. But at the same time, that's part of what makes hip hop, uh, hip hop so, so amazing sometimes. Emotions to touch, something inside to open you up, help you cope with the rough times and shit. I'm sending love cause we ain't prime and shit. My nigga, y'all niggas ain't stopping me. Y'all niggas ain't stopping me. Got the chorus coming in. Y'all niggas ain't stopping me. Alright, so how do I feel about the track? I love the track. Um... I feel like the big three are in prime form. You know, Kendrick with the beef is in prime form. Drake, Drake performed well in the beef too. Drake, Drake's in prime form and J. Cole, prime form. And I'm, I think like a lot of people are saying like, yo, J. Cole, you don't have a foot to stand on. You can't talk about what you would have done in the beef um, when you bowed out. And it's not like what he would have done it's, or, or how he would have performed or that he would have won the beef. I think what he's trying to say is that like, yeah, I could have continued to go on to this, uh, go and feed into this and really try to go at it. But like, that's not what I came here to do. That's not that's not who I am. And I feel like people are missing out on that. And um, like you can listen to Cole and hear that, like, yo, this guy, this guy could go at you if you wanted to. Um, but I don't need him to do that in order for him to prove to me that he's like in the top three discussion or or, or in the discussion of the best. Uh, lyric lyricist in the game right now and I think that this track was beautiful man I think like you can hear him speak it from his soul and I feel like music often hits better when you can tell the artist is doing that like when he when he dropped I might delete later when he had his diss towards Kendrick you could like the vibrations of what he was saying against Kendrick I'm like you don't even believe that because I know he thinks that Kendrick is amazing so I feel like he was pulling shit out of his ass but with this track I feel like I feel his soul I feel his intention and to me, it's nice. I know like a lot of people are saying it's fucking corny and it's whack, but I think they're missing the point of what he's trying to explain and what he's trying to do. Like, I, I really think that this fucks with his soul in regards to taking time out to try and tear someone he, he considers a friend down. Like, think about you and your close friend and y'all literally fall out because you're trying to prove that you're better than him at something. Like, is it is it really worth it? And Cole's saying, nah, it's not. And Cole's trying to salvage the relationship he has with Drake. And he's like, yo, man, that's, this isn't, I like me side, me um, calling the beef off or whatever. It wasn't me like leaving you on an island or anything like that. And to Kendrick, I, you know, I need to listen back to what he said. Uh, I don't think he had any choice words specific for Kendrick, but he did when he made that apology. So I think he's just like kind of clearing the air and just giving his thoughts on it. And, you know, people want him to respond to the apology. He finally did. And people have a problem with it. But I think... I think it's a really solid track. This is the Cole that I enjoy. Like, I'm I'm a big fan of J. Cole. I remember J. Cole at one point was my favorite artist when he was dropping, or when he dropped uh, A Doll in a Dream and Friday Night Lights. And like, I remember when he was, uh, you know, when he made Let Nas Down and bruh, like, J. Cole is like one of my favorite artists of all time. And I feel like this track embodies a lot of the reasons why I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of him. Like, he's just honest. Sometimes to a fault, and he's just explaining to you guys his thought process as to what was going down whenever he did make that apology. So, anyways, that was really good.
That was a really good song. And I, I'm trust. I'm going to use that in a. Uh, <laughs> and trust. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that in edit. So you've seen me on IG with that song playing in the back. Just revert back to this video and say that Russ already said that he was going to use it in that track. All right. So I'm here editing the video. I actually just finished up. Man, I decided that I'm actually going to go ahead and start filming tomorrow's bench session. Just kind of make up for the trash ass Dello session that I had. But hope you guys enjoyed the album review that I added to this channel. I used to do that all the time. So I'm kind of excited to incorporate it more and more. This video ended up being like damn near 35 like minutes. So it's actually insane. I'll catch you guys uh, tomorrow in the next video, whenever I upload again. So thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. Like always, if you guys like today's video, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and get better today.